Hi everyone, List the Knee List Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a list. Kanye West, from worst to best. What inspired this video is that earlier this year you may have caught that Complex Media, the MCN for this YouTube channel, came out with an article ranking Kanye West's projects from worst to best. It was kind of controversial, mostly because of the very low placement of late registration. At the time I was thinking about doing some kind of response or stink piece about it, but there weren't that many things that I uh, disagreed with strongly, like on a, on, on a gut level uh, in the article. Article. Obviously, the article was written from, from a big fan's perspective, so uh, that person had positive things to say about nearly every project there, which is fine. Basically why I didn't really make a response, because a lot of the logic behind that article seemed to be fueled by just more personal taste, uh, not really anything egregious uh, within the article itself. But uh, still, I thought the idea of doing this, embarking on a list like this, was a cool and an interesting idea, so um, I'm trying to do it myself here. Cruel Summer. Uh, this is really more of a various artist compilation, not entirely a Kanye project. I only include it here because uh, uh, it was included in the original list. Really more of a technicality, uh, my inclusion uh, on this list. There are some great singles on it, but this is really just, again, a compilation that's kind of masterminded by Kanye through the good music label. And I guess it's, it's good to throw here because it's an example of Kanye kind of dominating during a year when uh, rap crews, clicks, squads were the prevailing trend and then immediately everybody's uh, rap crew kind of dissipated because everyone found out how hard it is to manage and uh, just keep a rap crew going because of all the competing egos and artistic styles. Also varying levels of fame and relevance. Everybody kind of has their own separate solo thing going too. You know, it, it just comes down to everybody wants to be Wu-Tang. But I mean, after a while, even Wu-Tang couldn't be Wu-Tang anymore because they all had to kind of go off and do their own separate things. Best tracks on this thing though, Mercy, New God flow and also the uh, don't like remix. Hey, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Kanye's worst album, in my opinion, and for a number of reasons. For one, this is the rare moment in Kanye's career where he's not ahead of the curve. He's not on the cutting edge. Instead, on this album, Kanye is trying to play catch up with the growing trend of experimental and industrial hip hop that had already been thriving and reinventing itself for the past two years. And it sounds like it with all the rushed kind of rickety, not that adventurous instrumentals on this album, the ridiculously overly simplistic, dumb lyrics. Pretty much everything Kanye does on this record pales in comparison to the new, bold, and boundary-pushing crop of artists who obviously inspired this album. There are a few cool ideas and singles here and there. Uh, Black Skinhead is a pretty decent track, even if this song at its core is Kanye crying about how the fashion industry won't accept him. But ultimately, this album on the whole is a miserable attempt at being experimental. So much so that the afterglow of My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy couldn't convince the entire hip-hop industry to get on board with this album. The best tracks on this album, though, being uh, Blood on Leaves and Bound 2. Watch the throne, watch the throne, watch the throne. This album was essentially the first leg of Kanye's post My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy victory lap, Cruel Summer being the second. A lot of people at the time saw this collaborative album with Jay-Z as kind of being a, a torch passing moment, but I don't see it uh, really as that because uh, I feel like that torch from Jay-Z's generation to Kanye's generation had already been passed. If this album does anything, or did anything at the time, it confirmed what we already knew. That Kanye was at the top of his game, and nobody on a solo level was really competing with him. Though this album, in a sense, was still kind of a, a Jay and Kanye trying to provide some counterpoint, some competition to uh, the noise that Lil Wayne and Drake were making at the time. Because Drake was kind of this new, exciting, up-and-coming face who was starting to rival Kanye in terms of being a hip-hop artist with massive pop crossover appeal. Which, if you followed Kanye's career, that's one of the things that made him so special in the first place. Now, this album did have a lot of shortcomings to it. Uh, Jay-Z not being in his lyrical prime. There are some very gimmicky beats on this thing, too. There are even a few tracks that I think in the short time this album's been released have not aged that well. Like, Who Gon' Stop Me sounds like a bad dubstep remix of what could have been a good Kanye song. And this album came a year 
year or two late to be the glamorous send-off to the bling era of hip-hop that I think it accidentally was. And even Chuck D came out and I think made a very good observation of this album being so ritzy, so glitzy, to the point where it was kind of tone deaf. Still, some of Kanye's best tracks are on this album. The extravagance of this record does kind of make it a unique moment in his career. And I would say there are more moments on this album than there are not where Kanye and Jay-Z bring quite a bit of chemistry to the table. My picks on this album would have to be Murder to Excellence and Gotta Have It and uh, the, the, the song about them being in Paris. The life of Pablo. The life of Pablo. I think The Life of Pablo is one of Kanye's most interesting albums. He takes an incredible amount of risks on this record, and the promotional rollout of this album was one of the oddest in the history of hip-hop. But Pablo lands in the bottom half of this list because it's such a mess of an album, especially when you consider the subpar mixing on the first version of the record that was released to everybody. Uh, that, that was not really alleviated all that much with the version that's more widely available now. Musically and thematically, this record is all over the place. You have tracks like Ultralight Beam, which features a great verse from Chance the Rapper and is essentially like this futuristic gospel epic. The very freaky schizo freestyle 4 that I think comes closer to making industrial rap music than any number of tracks from Yeezus. And tracks like No Parties in LA and Real Friends Bring Back the Old Kanye that Kanye is joking about on the song I Love Kanye. There are some very bright and entertaining ideas on this album. Also, some uh, very uninspired ones, too. The line about Kanye getting some model's asshole bleach on his t-shirt uh, will probably go down in history as one of his worst. The song Part 2 is really just a glorified panda remix, and there are still a number of tracks on this thing with the rushed feel of the album that come off kind of haphazardly slapped together and don't really sound like they know what they're doing or they know what they want to be, Wolves being probably the prime example. Still, though, that rawness, that unpredictability, that lightning-in-a-bottle quality that this album has does make it a unique moment in Kanye's discography. Even if it does end up being kind of a double-edged sword for the record, some of my favorite tracks on this album include uh, Famous, Ultralight Beam, Feedback, Facts, and Real Friends. <laughs> Graduation, graduation, oh graduation. Kanye's third album here is one of my personal favorites. If I was basing this list merely on my personal preferences, I would have probably placed it higher, but part of my logic going into this list is that I wanted to talk about Kanye's albums, uh, not just from the perspective of, hey, I like this one, I like that one, this is what makes this one special, but also uh, I, I kind of rank these albums in uh, level of importance and relevancy and significance to Kanye's career as a whole. I think this album was really good for the time it was released, but there are reasons I didn't put it higher. After the college dropout, and late registration, Kanye was looking to challenge himself, shake things up, try something different, and potentially push his career to the next level by fully embracing the sounds of pop rap. I would even say that he innovated within that sound with a handful of the songs here, uh, namely cuts like Flashing Lights and Stronger, by tastefully incorporating elements of dance music and electronic music. The issue is that a bulk of this album right now sounds so dated because it just reeks of the bling era that it was born out of. Which, in retrospect, seems like kind of an odd move considering that late registration and the college dropout were so great because they were a breath of fresh air from that. Prime examples of tracks that did not age well on this album being uh, Barry Bonds with Lil Wayne, The Good Life with T-Pain, and Never Mind Hot and Drunk Girls because that track was just awful upon the release of this record. However, for its time, this album was nothing short of a success for Kanye. And while there were some hip-hop purists who were kind of griping about him uh, kind of doing a bit of a departure from his trademark sound, this album proved that Kanye's talents 
were extending and could extend beyond the hip-hop universe, which he would continue to do with album after album after album. Uh, some of the best tracks on this album, in my opinion, are Flashing Lights, Good Morning, Everything I Am, Big Brother, an amazing autobiographical track from Kanye. And I don't think he gets enough credit for the homecoming track with Chris Martin on this album, because for its time, that was a weird feature, that was a weird collaboration for a hip-hop artist to do. Very uncool for a hip-hop artist to do that kind of feature, and the song went over really well. Kanye has continued to, to prove himself as, as being a hip-hop artist who has way more eclectic tastes than a lot of his contemporaries. 808s and heartbreak, 808s and heartbreak. 808s, uh, very much the opposite of Graduation in that upon its initial release, this album was widely misunderstood, disliked by very many people. A lot of people assumed that this was Kanye's complete departure uh, from hip hop, that everyone's assumptions that they were pulling out of what Kanye was doing on Graduation had been confirmed. But little did anybody know in 2008 that what Kanye was doing on this record would be the, the shape of hip-hop to come less than five years later. Because Kanye's hyper-emotional and auto-tuned balladry on this album would, down the road, translate into artists like Drake and Future. Now, whether or not the genius of this move was entirely Kanye's is up for debate because Kid Cudi was a co-writer on at least a few tracks on this record, but Kanye taking huge amounts of inspiration and ideas from his contemporaries and protégés is nothing new at this point. No ID, Rhyme Fest, Travis Scott. But being early to the party doesn't necessarily mean that Kanye did this sound best. Uh, since 2008, this style has had a lot of time to mature and smooth out and I think gain more of a pop appeal. There are a few moments on this record that did not age all that well, like See You In My Nightmares, where Kanye goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wheezy to see who has the worst singing voice. Rarely does a song embody its title this much. And the track Robocop fills Kanye's quota for horrifically corny song idea that made the cut of the album anyway. But some of 808's most pivotal tracks I think still serve as a blueprint today for a lot of the very tuneful trap that's climbing the charts right now, even if the artists making it aren't fully aware of that. And the song Amazing with Jeezy even teases toward the sound that Kanye would be delivering to us with My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. This isn't a perfect album, but it's one of the most cutting edge moments in Kanye's entire discography, and also a very glamorous and melodic adventure through Kanye's psyche during a time when he was going through a lot of personal turmoil due to losing the most important person in his life, his mother. Somehow he soldiered through this extravagant pop epic and densely packed it with raw emotions, so raw that they made up for a lot of Kanye's vocal shortcomings. The best tracks on this thing, in my opinion, Heartless, Welcome to Heartbreak, Amazing, Bad News, Love Lockdown, and Coldest Winter. Late registration, it's late. Registration. Lay Registration, one of my personal favorites in Kanye's discography. Even if there isn't that much to say about it in light of, of what we already knew about Kanye at the time and heard from Kanye after the college dropout, this album may be in a lot of ways a refined reiteration of many of the sounds that we heard on his debut. But this record is super important because it showed that Kanye had commercial viability. He wasn't just a one album wonder. Singles like Gold Digger made him what he is today and confirmed that Kanye's style had chart power without him having to water it down or sell it short. This record is like 10 years old at this point. It still sounds great. It's most likely going to go down as one of Kanye's most timeless efforts. And that's all thanks to the great fundamentals that Kanye came into this album with. The very funny and clever one-liners in terms of phrase in his verses. The great production on this thing laced with bright, inspiring soul samples and smooth, jazzy loops. Good feature list, raw personality, great messages on some of these songs, very personal deep cuts too, like Roses and Addiction and Crack Music. Those tracks on this album are some of the best in my opinion, in addition to uh, Diamonds from Sierra Leone. Heard him say, hey mama, and gone. My beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Okay, I get it. I, I can already hear the people typing. I can already see the eyebrows 
raising at my placement of this album, because uh, my review of this record is <laughs> probably one of the most <laughs> infamous reviews to, to, to have ever been written in this decade. But again, if I were making this list purely on personal taste, uh, th this would be a little bit lower. Late registration and graduation would be a little bit higher. Maybe the life of Pablo would be a little bit higher too. But truth be told, my overall opinions of this record have not changed all that much. So re-reviewing it, which I constantly get requests to do, uh, wouldn't really make sense at this point. So while this record hasn't really grown on me on a personal level all that much since its initial release, uh, the importance that this album holds in Kanye's discography becomes more and more apparent every year. Simply put, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is Kanye's entire career getting a second wind, uh, probably the biggest second wind any hip-hop artist has ever received in their career. Career, to the point where it's almost like he hit the fucking reset button. And I think it's the second win that Kanye's career needed. Not that I think it was on life support or anything, but had Kanye not made the grand return to rap music that he did on this album, I really think he would have been done for. Because after 808s, a lot of the hip hop industry had kind of counted him out a little bit, which he immediately made them regret doing uh, with this album. This record is also Kanye's long-awaited meditation on fame, which at the time seemed to mean a great deal to his fans, even if to me a lot of it seemed like very empty and like a lot of what he was saying was just him referencing this completely made-up tabloid lifestyle that he, he wasn't leading, but clearly wanted to lead and went on to lead. The song Dark Fantasy, I think, will go down as one of the best opening tracks of the decade. The track Power is easily one of hip-hop's most excellent and grandiose singles. This album's opulence is really something to behold, and I appreciate it as one of the most ambitious moments in Kanye's career. Even if I still do hold to my opinion that uh, this thing does really fall apart in the second half, about as fantastically as the album starts, I think. Uh, though my favorite tracks on this thing, Dark Fantasy, Power, uh, Monster. Oh, and uh, Gorgeous. Can't forget Gorgeous. Which leads me to my number one spot, my favorite record in Kanye's discography, that would have to be uh, The College Dropout. Maybe that has something to do with me being around and remembering when Kanye released The College Dropout and remembering what a breath of fresh air he was to the music industry at large. Maybe it had something to do with me being in college when this album came out. But I still do really feel that this album stands as one of the best artistic statements in Kanye's entire discography. Uh, again, a lot like Late Registration, Kanye came into this record with great fundamentals. A cool concept, sound, and theme that ran through a great deal of the record. I know this doesn't seem like a big deal, but the skits were very colorful and entertaining and added a lot of character to the album. Keep in mind this is during an era in hip-hop where skits were notoriously shitty and often ruined an album. Kanye's lyrical style, his sense of humor, his personality, the fact that he just came off like himself. He wasn't trying to put anything on. He wasn't trying to convince you he was something that he wasn't. He wasn't trying to put up this tough guy facade either. He wasn't pandering to his cult of personality. He, he didn't have one yet. Kanye's whole dissection of how people perceive college, how people just mindlessly go to college without thinking about why they're doing it or what they're trying to get out of it, showed a connection to and an understanding of what average people are going through, which I, Kanye hasn't really showcased in a long time. Also, it's it's been a while since Kanye's come off this likable too. And I'm not trying to imply that that by saying this is my favorite Kanye record, this to me is his most important album because this is him at his inception, his amazing and wave creating entrance into the mainstream. I'm not trying to imply that everything has just kind of gone downhill from here because for, for the past 13 years or so, there's never been a dull moment. Sure, Kanye's had his, his highs and his lows, which I'm sure will continue to be the case, but that turbulence is part of what makes him such an interesting artist to begin with. Of course, Kanye's production on this thing is fantastic. Consistently, the beats on this thing are emotionally charged, they're inspiring, they're uplifting. Jesus Walks, still one of his most amazing songs. Other favorites on this album? R really, it's, <laughs> it's, it's almost all the tracks on this thing, but I guess if I had to pick, uh, We Don't Care, All Falls Down, obviously through the wire. School spirit, breathe in, breathe out, new workout plan, and finally get them high. And I guess that's gonna finish the video right here. That'll round the video out. That is Kanye West from worst to best, in my opinion. Uh, again, sort of a combination of uh, what I think is 
the most relevant and important moments in his career uh, fused with, you know, what are some of my personal favorites too. I didn't just want to do a very indulgent personal list. I think uh, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this list. I think uh, I came to the best conclusion that I could um, sort of trying to balance objectivity and subjectivity, I guess, if you could even do such a thing. But uh, there you go. That's that's the list right there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Transition. Have you watched this video? I hope you did because you're at the end of it. <laughs> and <laughs> what did you think of this list? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should list next? And um, you're, you're number one. You the best. Okay? Cool. Anthony Fantano, Kanye West, links next to my head. Subscribe to the channel, other videos forever.